My name is Bastien Sachet, and I'm the CEO of Earthworm Foundation. Earthworm is a not-for-profit organization whose mission is the regeneration of the soils and the forests of our planet. We've done this for over 20 years by working with companies that are committed to change and helping them answer three key questions. In this series, we will discover the women and men who are asking these questions. Join me to learn more about what drives them and their ideas to regenerate our world. I'm here with Pascal Boivin, who is our guest today. Pascal is a professor of soil sciences in the University of Applied Sciences in Geneva. So all your life is about soil health. And uh, we work with Pascal through our Living Soils Initiative and he's part of our scientific committee and we've had the chance to know him a bit better and to work with him. Pascal is, is also the president of the Confederation of Soil Sciences, which recently organized EuroSoil. It gathers soil scientists from all over Europe, but also this year invited corporates and other organizations to participate to the debate. Pascal, uh, the first question I want to ask you is, why soil? Well, I think it started with my family and I was always wondering, and after, after decades working on soil, I was just wondering why, why did I do that? And um, finally, I, I think it's because my grandfathers and all my uncles, they were winemakers. And in particular, there was one of my grandfathers, he was a very famous one, and he was making a lot of studies on the relationship between the soils and the, the wine. We were always uh, taught about this, it comes from this soil, this soil, and so on. So there was something quite religious, you know, there was an ethic of that or so, it was very interesting. And, and it links to this notion of terroir, huh, where the soil and the people are one. So if you had to, dis to describe your work today, so uh, you're a professor, so you teach, you research, what is your, what is your role and, and, and your function today? Yeah, I came, I came from agronomy from my background, but I very rapidly focused on soil science, so I was trained in many aspects of soil science, even with the PhD thesis and starting with research and pure research first and then uh, teaching also here in Switzerland after many other ex experiences. And so my daily work is first to have a group, to find money to, for them to work, yeah. to generate projects that have some interest for us. We try to focus on something which is meaningful. So very concretely, um, you have a, I know you have a project in, in uh, near Bern where you're working with hundreds of farmers. Huh? And there, you measure plenty of parameters on their farm, from uh, the number of bugs, uh, the organic matter. Uh, In fact, they, they measure it. So that's okay. the best thing. It's uh, just to, to, to rely on parameters they have to watch anyway, because of some Swiss regulations and so on. And you may have some. Or you may have your own monitoring additionally, but you start from their questions. Some pioneers will do. We can just just interfere there. Say, why not do this or this? Would you try? And they're trying, and we are watching. And then we can f send back some information. The other thing is to work with uh, lighthouse farmers. It's often called like these pioneers. Yeah. yeah, and they are doing very amazing thing. You know, you just can't imagine. And you come to their farm, say, oh, what? What? What are you doing now? I do this. Do you really do it? Yes, that's fine. Okay, so let's watch it. And then when you come three years later, so just to visit this farmer again and say, can I see again this? Say, oh no, I'm no longer doing it. I found something better. And that's what I'm inventing. So watching it and allowing to upscale. So today, a lot of this research has been published, validated, and is being used at different levels in, uh, by governments. Uh, I know you've been contacted by different governments to, to look at the progress that uh, your teams have, uh, have made, because there is a lot of uh, information that can inform future policies. So you're constantly making the backwards and forwards between different worlds. Today, uh, you're in contact with corporates, then you're in contact with government officials, with your peers in the academic research, with youngsters who you are teaching to, with farmers, of course. Um, how do you manage on the day-to-day -day this diversity of contact? It's, it it's mostly very stimulating and very interesting. It gives also um, a, a meaning uh, to your work. It, it's very, uh, it makes sense, I mean, what you're doing. And um, every, every part is feeling the other part. So that's, that's demanding but very interesting. I mean, it's absolutely different from just staying in your lab 
getting your data and just syncing to them with it's, literature. It's the opposite of that in a way. It's, it's not because we have to publish too and we are very fr frustrated not to have enough time to do it. So we do that also, of course, you have to, if, if you don't make very good papers in international re journals, you're just making some blah blah, you know. Yeah. You just have to validate this with the peer review and at a high level. So you've, you've spent your life working on soils in, you know, abroad and now a lot in, in Europe. Um, and, and you're coming to a point in your career where you, you still have a few years ahead, but uh, you've, you've got a good part of your career, your career behind you. Fast. So what, what would you like to achieve in the time that you have, uh, I don't know, the, f the, the years you have to, uh, ahead of you? The main achievement would be to have good young scientists uh, whom I'm proud about. I mean, proud about what they're doing and I can just go and enjoy my retirement and say, it's going on. So it's about transmitting. I think that's the main important because you can always think, oh, I should do this and this, but maybe you will not achieve that and at some time you will be too old. So I think what is important is that it goes on with some other people. It's not that you achieve it. You, once you mentioned, and this is in line with what you've said about uh, creating a generation of scientists, you, want, you would like to create an association of the young agronomists for soils. So, so could you just tell me a little bit about what that idea is? Yeah, this, this is an idea that came up when we were discussing about how can we upscale. And I think both for upscaling and so both for developing awareness and, and the, right, the right posture of, of, of the young engineers or scientists is to get them involved in this question. So the, the, I was lucky to be in contact with very interesting people, like I said, corporate, when I was more than 50, you know? Yeah. And I think it's better if they are at 25 in contact with these people also and understand what the farmers are doing, where is their energy, where, what is their problem, but what corporates are doing, where is their energy, where are their problems. Yes. And this they should know. And that's maybe a good way to both have a lot of young people uh, willing to go on. Which leads to my next questions, yeah, but I think you already partially answered it. What would you tell a young, a young person, a young scientist interested in, 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 in this topic of regeneration, what, what message would you give him? First, he has to know very well what occurs in the field with the farmers. Of course, you have science on something. Soil is very complicated. So you have science on biology or mineralogy or physics or tr physics of transfers or whatever. There are many topics, but don't ignore the others. You have to know already in your background, you have to know uh, more than a little bit of each, though you are specialized on something. And then please go to the field, go to the farmers. I have a PhD student, she is from university. And before starting her PhD thesis with me, she said, I, would you mind if I just take one year more? I want to work one year in farm. Wow. So she worked in farms during one year. I mean, just driving the trucks and so on. Yeah, that's very fine because now she knows. So she is involved in soil biology, in soil microbiology, genomics. She collects her samples in the farm and she knows what the farmer is doing and when to take his, his samples and how to give a feedback to the farmers. Uh, how do you manage the fact that for 40 years of your career, soil health has been like the black sheep. It didn't get a lot of attention. And then suddenly you got all the projectors, you got the phone ringing and a lot of people are calling you to say, hey, this is interesting. What are you doing? We want to know more. Can you come and talk here and there, etc." What's the feeling? I used to say that after being a soil scientist, I became a, a bureaulogue, you know, in French. I mean, you, you, begin, you, begin, you become a both. Okay. And then you have to consider the general frame. And in 2004, mm -hmm. there was a special re, uh, issue from Science, you know, this very, one of the very top uh, scientific uh, journals. So it's not a journal on soils, but there was a special issue on soils. Mm -hmm. And the title was um, Soil the last frontier. And in, uh, when working or when preparing this, they just stated, that the, the board stated that uh, erosion was as, li as big a problem as climate change. Already. And it was 24, you know. Um, hope started with uh, farmers first. So you work with farmers, you see that they regenerate their soil, that they have solutions. there's some, yeah, they have, and they invented them and you can help them. So they are very, very happy when you come and you just, help them to better focus on different solutions and better 
uh, hierarchy setting and so on. And second, with uh, organizations like yours, because then come the corporates. And at first, when you're a scientist, even working with farmers, you don't just think that all the private, I mean, the industry and so on, probably they won't consider these problems. And then, uh, thanks to you, thanks to us, for instance, I had the opportunity to meet top level people from, uh, from corporates. And they were even more stressed than me by these things. They realized as well. Yeah, and that's very important. And so, you, um, one experience, very common experience is when I talk about this with colleagues, they say, yeah, this is greenwashing, isn't it? So, you know, yeah, they don't, they don't. It's easier if you just can have the devil somewhere and that's your, your, your way of thinking the thing is, is much more comfortable, you know. Um, but that's not, the, that's not the truth and uh, they are willing to go fast. So that's really make a big change. The stress has changed from how we've got a big problem to how we've got a big opportunity, but let's be careful yeah. in how we leverage that let's opportunity. Not let's we not can. mess it up. Exactly. Um, I always like to, to ask uh, our, our invitees uh, one question about the, 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 few, the, the values we've got in our firm. So we've got courage, truth, humility, respect and compassion. And I always ask, uh, uh, what of those, which one of those values do you, do you identify the most with? Of I, course, I, I think you I, I think I, I should endorse mostly truth and humility, because truth is the, should be the achievement of the scientist. Yeah. See? This is truth, but humility, as we say, because uh, you don't bring the truth. You show the evidence of what is true. I have one question which is a bit disconnected from what we're just discussing now, but which is around technology. We see a lot of apps and we see a lot of, uh, you know, innovation around technological solutions to manage soil health and to restore. And we feel a lot of investment is going into these solutions because they are seen as, as a remedy to a lot of what's not going well. What's your view on, on technology and, and how to leverage it for as soil I, health? As I said, technology is very good. I'm very interested. I mean, particularly for, for scientists, it's so, so exciting to, to, to play with them. So very good. But we tend to focus on that at an incredibly ridiculous level. So each time we face a problem, let's find the technology that will solve it all. <laughs> We have all the technologies we need to reach incredibly ambitious objectives right now. So let's do it. And for some reasons, we are just focusing on finding the new, the new you know, something we will just grip and we are, it's okay, everything is solved. Silver bullet. And that's absolutely wrong. Um, so basically, what you recommend for uh, the, the bigger problem is more an adaptation than a technology, an adaptation of us humans in the way we work and the way we approach problems and the way we collaborate together uh, rather than just a magic silver bullet solution that will solve it all. Yes, uh, this is also a kind of a comparison between sumo and uh, maybe uh, taekwondo or something like this, you know, just, you just don't, we have practiced sumo with the environment, you know, become very heavy, very strong and then just that's going to be this way. And now maybe we have to play more with the energies that we can use because we want them to, to be optimized and to be sustainable. So we have to use these energies. Yes, that's a very different way of not only a culture, of course, this is rooted in a culture. So if we have to question this, but also of managing our activities or teaching. A good challenge, a good challenge for all of us to, uh, to reflect on. Pascal, thank you very much. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure to, to hear you and to go quite deep about how, you know, from science and soil science, we, we move to more soci sociological or cultural concepts. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.